Y yeah, I just took the cover, this cover, off the handy lathe. And you probably think I'm crazy. Yeah, I am. But I like myself. So, I want to go over a few things. People that own this lathe. All right, the shift fork goes into there. And that selects for the, the feed train, right? The power feed, either <clears throat> geared feed or belt feed. Geared feeds for threading, belt feeds for, well, feeding. There's the belt, <clears throat> comes off the spindle. There's a little trap door that says grease. So these fittings are grease fittings there. <clears throat> Down in there, the bush, these are bronze bushes. That bush is like, got some wear on it, and it's sloppy, okay? It's just running this thing, not cutting anything. This gets hot, because there's wear in that bushing, and there's no lubrication, proper bearing surface area, whatever you want. <clears throat> so, I'm going to try to... Loosen that. Seems loose. How's that go? Oh, it goes down or up? What the hell? Hmm. Is there another thing? Ooh, see? Something with that. Hmm. That's supposed to mesh, but it's not. Let's see. Something's... Oh, that. I gotta loosen that. Anyhow, I was kind of thinking about doing something else. Fixing that bushing, maybe replacing it with a needle bearing. If I do put a needle bearing in there, it has to be a hard shaft like 60C, don't know. But <clears throat> instead of having this belt drive off the spindle, I think the belt it's belt drive for uh, slippage. If you jam something up, the belt will slip. I think it's for safety. Anyhow, I can either go direct with gears or with the belt, which kind of comes from the same spot. But anyhow, what I was thinking of doing is this. See, this is a casting. This comes off. This comes off. This is separate. Da 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 da. So there's a parting line here, and this comes off. I was thinking about cutting this, right? Cutting this straight down and taking this piece out. Cut it out, mill it out, finish it out with a milling machine. And then instead of the belt going to the spindle, I could have this belt come out here and have a motor, I think there was a tag here or something, put one, two, three, four bolts and have like a, a bracket with a rocker to create belt tension and uh, have an external three-phase motor. So the main motor, I think that's Three horsepower. It could be five, but I think it's three. I think the generator is five horse and this is three horse. Not sure. I could look on the tag, but I think it's three horse. How much of a horsepower motor would I need to exclusively drive the feed train for, you know, moving the carriage? I'm thinking a horse would be plenty. I think a half horse might be plenty, but I don't know if I'm going really fast. It might not be. So, I'm thinking I want to do this. Maybe, because Hardings are like that. They have a separate motor. So I have a three-phase motor and a VFD to control everything. Now, what speed? The top speed of the spindle on this lathe is 2,000 RPM. I know Monarch had 3,000 and they had 4,000 as an option. 2,000 seems plenty fast for me. 
It does. With the accuracy left on this lathe, I think 2000 is fine. So, if I want to get a 2000 RPM motor for the feed, because it's going to be, you know, kind of the same, 1800 RPM motor is going to work. Driven with a VFD, I can do whatever. I can even convert the DC motor to a five horse three phase motor and have a VFD on it. So I could have two VFDs and I could run them synchronous, have this motor, the potentiometer synchronous with that potentiometer controlling that VFD or I could have them separate, which I think I like. But somehow I'm thinking I could put some bolts through there or tap that. I could tap it. I, 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 so I'm going to cut this out, I think, and square it up nice and mount a motor there for a separate feed motor because three, three phase motors, and I might even get a really small motor, a three phase motor, one horse. The European, I think they're called IEC motors. I forget. The European motors are much smaller than American NEMA motors. So maybe I'll get a one horse or a three quarter horse. Three quarter sounds good. 1800 RPM uh, metric European motor. And make a bracket and drill and tap some holes and somehow mount it here. And I think that's crazy. But I like myself. But first I gotta take this out and see what the heck kind of bushing is shot. You know, see what's going on with that. So we'll see. I'm gonna loosen that screw and I'm gonna maybe I'll take this out and see what I need to do. Um, a couple bolts. This whole thing comes off. Like that sound? And that whole thing comes off. But I don't know. Let me pause the camera and kind of get into this a little bit. But let me know what you think. Then I could have. The thing is, you could tune your chip like a Harding HLVH with a potentiometer and change the, the, the feed on the fly. Kind of neat. Another option, plan B, is I think the feed is one half the geared speed. Let me say that again. The belt feed is half the geared feed. So, if I was to keep everything and keep the ratios of these pulleys, whatever they are, I gotta measure them. Two to one, and I replaced them with toothed timing belt pulleys. So it's a synchronized belt feed. Then I could go two to one. So then I could take my feed chart and cut it well, double it, right? Because instead of 100 threads per inch, I could have 200 threads per inch because it's slower. So that's two. Okay, so then 120. So I could have 240 threads per inch, which is stupid. 120 is stupid. Um. Or I could do a metric, if I did all the math, maybe I could do a tooth timing belt in some kind of metric configuration. What is it, 33 tooth and 55 tooth is the cheap way with the minimal count. I forget what, you know, whatever that is. 25.4 to one, something like that. Anyhow, that's an option too. So maybe uh, leave me some comments before I get into this thing. Thanks. Dozer Shop.